Hey. I'm being holding out fun doing this video for a little while because I didn't think I really need to. I thought people would be a little better than this. Uh, you know, they'd care more about what's going on in the world around the planet we live on because we all do share the same planet and uh, yeah, w whatever you do on any part of the planet kind of affects the whole place. Like, yeah, that's why what people do in China affects people living in Hawaii or especially when there's rising sea levels. Like, a lot of island nations are facing the consequences of um, global warming as they'll have to either move to dark ground or, you know, they're just kind of drowned, I guess. But yeah, I mean, climate scientists are saying a lot of, a lot more land, like southern United States and England, is going to be underwater, so. I don't know, but, um, I wanted to make this video about how China, or, I think it's people in Vietnam, but, uh, well, China is the only country that kills more, um, more animals than the U.S. because, uh, they're the strongest, or the people who most heavily believe in magic and how they, they kill trillions of sharks every year because, you know, shark fin, um, like shark fin uh, soup is big in China and there's birds in that soup and, you know, they just love to eat animals, I guess. Uh, but what I would say was like the people in Vietnam, I think it's just in Vietnam, maybe not. Um, there's the thing about rhino horns, you know, how we have a rapidly declining rhino population, like 55 million years ago, a little more than that. The ancestor of the rhino evolved in India and its descendants uh, spread out throughout uh, India, Africa. Uh, there's a Javan rhino now, lives on Java, the island. Uh, Sumatran rhino lives on Sumatra, uh, black rhino, white rhino, and Indian rhino. Um, but the reason they're declining so rapidly, even though they are probably protected, but personally, I think they might be protected in zoos, but if they can't live in the wild, like I eyes the that primate that lives just in a small strip of Madagascar land. It's like, yeah, it'd be much better if they could just live in the wild, but there's too much, they're worth too much money. People are going to kill them just because there's an illegal trade in their furs or whatever. I mean, so the thing about rhinos is there are people that still believe in um, the magic of their horns, just the rhino horns. They poachers kill the rhinos and they cut off their horns because they usually grind it into powder or they saw it just as like, a, I think a five, uh, a three kilogram horn is worth more than three hundred thousand dollars. So it's more than its weight in gold. To some people, I guess, uh, because in fifteen ninety seven, the the Shi Chen in China published a medical paper, um, medical paper saying that rhino horn powder or just the horn itself was a cure-all for keeping away evil spirits, getting rid of nightmares and hallucinations, typhoid, convulsions, uh, diarrhea, um, fevers, colds, and arthritis, a bunch of other stuff. So, but me, I, I believe in magic, but, you know, not everything in it. Like, there are definitely some people who, uh, you just take it too far and works everything works for different people. Like some of it might work for some people but not others. I think well now that rhinos they can't really um 
since they're so threatened and yeah why why do we need to kill rhinos to get their horns for medicine it's like I mean I doubt it it definitely doesn't work it's just a placebo like they've done studies on whether it works and uh, like in China, they found, oh, it's really effective in other places now because it's a placebo. And for thousands of years, it was used in Chinese traditional medicine. They also said it was never used by itself. It's always paired with herbs. So maybe it's the herbs doing the curing making people feel better. Like the placebo is very, very powerful. Who knows if all medicine, all medicine could be a placebo. Um, so, yeah, this definitely needs to stop the trophy hunting and by for people killing so many rhinos um, for their horns. Um, and want to talk about, yeah, people are just too egocentric to, you know, get beyond this sire for the horns or whatever. I mean, if you, I think some people think, like, elephant tusks are good for, I don't know, you sit it on your desk and while you sit there, you pretend it's, I guess, your penis or whatever. They say it's a cure for erectile dysfunction, and I think, well, with that kind of culture, why not? To, um, why don't they just visualize it? Because I think that would work just about. That, that's what's basic, what it basically is, just visualization. <sighs> yeah, people are just too egocentric. They aren't thinking about the whole world, how everything affects everything. Like, I mean, there is even the Akashic Records. So we know the energy you put out into the world makes... Other people, like, it's ripple effect. You're sending out frequencies with your brain. Uh, like a signal. Like a satellite. Telling other people what, what's going on. Um, yeah, they're too egocentric. Like, uh, my sister eating the ice cream. Like, well, there is something called banana ice cream now. It's nice cream, not ice cream. Because, uh... It uses no cows, no cows went into it. And if you think that dairy isn't as bad as like actually eating the flesh of the animal, well, what do you, where do you think veal comes from? Veal is, you know, that cow moms have to have babies to give milk. Then we take the milk and we take the babies away and they can't grow into cows because they can't drink the milk. So they're really weak, and after a few weeks, we kill them, and they're grounded up into veal, and people eat them, and, you know, cow's milk is also not good for us, like, they're lactose intolerant people, it's really not something you should be drinking, it's for an animal that's supposed to grow to a lot bigger than just humans, I mean, they are the only, uh, the only organisms that don't Wean off, wean off, um, wean off from milking just a few months or weeks after, after breastfeeding, because breastfeeding is for rapid growth, and, okay, when you're done growing, when, and you're still having rapid growth, what is that? Cancer. So, it's like, why are we still drinking lactose and, you know, there are plenty of alternatives now, like that banana ice cream. If you really can't live without ice cream, just look it up, banana ice cream. I'll show you in another video how to do it. It's really not hard. Um, so yeah, we need to end trophy hunting. Poaching is, uh, stupid. Why do we? Like, I just read the, I think, Gregory's Cat. Once it was outlawed, the um, outlawing of poaching big cats for their pelts, people moved on to smaller cats like Gregory's cat, which lives in South America, of course, 
or like Central America. For it has a spotted pelt, unlike domestic cats, but it's just as small as domestic cats, so they can still hunt it. And it takes 25 uh, of those cats to make one fur coat for humans. And I mean, why do we need to wear fur when we have like cotton, hemp, polyester, uh, yeah. I think hemp, hemp is a really good fabric. Like, this pillow is made of hemp. I like it. It's waterproof and feels nice. Uh, I get better sleep on it. Um, so, I also wanted to say, in their other animals, like, anything with the red dye, any food with the red dye, like cotton candy or... I think there are some things that it just says in the ingredients, red number, whatever, like, it's just a red dye, red food coloring. That's made from millions of, I don't know, I don't know how many it takes, but there are these red beetles. Uh, they just pound up the beetles and till it's a paste, and then they put it on food for the coloring and... I mean, you can use paprika to make food red, or... I don't think we don't really need to eat stuff with artificial dyes, because that's all processed junk. And I mean, eating junk food is an overlooked reason why many people are just tired all the time. If you feel really low energy or tired all the time, which a lot of people are, maybe it's because you're eating food that you're not supposed to, like cookies, cakes, pies, ice cream, cotton candy, anything with artificial dyes. I guess, um, I mean, it was outlawed in China in 1993 to hunt these rhinos, but and people still do illegal stuff. Um, yeah, I think what I really wanted you to get out of this video was people should spend more time just finding out what what's going on around me. I'm. Stop focusing just on yourself. Stop being so egocentric. Like, when my sister, my sister-in-law told me, well, vegan isn't healthy in the long term. Well, one, it is. It's just, you would supplement with B12 or you, you could um, just get B12 naturally. Like, how people used to get was they just took whatever out of the ground that they wanted to eat. And if they had dirt on it, they didn't have growing water, they didn't wash out the dirt, because the animals had the B12 because they eat soil and the protein because they eat plants. Um, calcium because it comes from the soil, which goes to the plants. But B12 either doesn't go get into the plants, so you either need a supplement or eat some soil. Uh, I think there's some B12 mushrooms, and also cockatoo plums, but I think those are real expensive, so, or, no, there's B12, there's B12 and seaweed, I think, like, wakame seaweed, I'm pretty sure has B12 in it, uh, yeah, seaweed is very absorbent, so, you should definitely eat seaweed, it's a health food, I, I like seaweed. Um, or, no, it's not, it's not what common seaweed is, it's porphyra, porphyra, like, purplish stuff, so, I definitely like eating seaweed, seaweed tastes good to me. I mean, when I was in Mallorca, I, we were at the beach, and there were seaweeds, so I figured, why not just eat the seaweed, okay? Ate it right off the beach. <laughs> Silly. Uh, yeah, so stop being so egocentric, guys. Uh, you think about the health of just one person. If veganism does have adverse effects on your health, which which it does, then it's a lot healthier. Um, if it is bad for your health, like 
Think about the health of one person versus the health of this whole planet and the ecosystems and the water systems that we all need to survive. Like, and all of the organisms too, like all of the wild animals, wild horses, uh, the cows, the sheep, the pigs, the chickens, the uh, birds, the ostriches, the emus, the kiwis, the elephants, the rhinos, the, the fish, the lobsters, the um, salmon, the, you know, all those things, the bees that pollinate, um, the spiders, scorpions, um, scare beetles, the whatever, the all the millions of species that if you do something, they're going to go extinct. Uh, the cats, the big cats. So. Yeah, so definitely pay attention to what's around you. Because I think the magic of Freemasons is all designed to just keep you from interacting with the world around you. Which is probably more referring to interacting with nature, like trees and earthing staying on the bare having bare feet on ground because earthing has a lot of benefits like communicating with the earth is something you do we're definitely supposed to do i think most was not until recently that we started using like rubber shoes and stuff that disconnect us from the earth people would either sleep on the ground or sleep on a animal pelt which is a semiconductor so Definitely walk barefoot outside. I mean, unless there's like pavement or nails around. Like, be careful, definitely. It matters where you are. Um, so pay more attention to what's going on around you. Like, uh, Like, I got this pan flute from um, a powwow that was just kind of near my house. It was, I think, like 26 minutes away, maybe. Like, because you, when you go to these events like powwows, you just learn a lot about the, how the Native Americans are doing these days. How, I mean, poverty is the biggest, uh, the, Number one, poverty among dem demographics. They're the demographic, the indigenous population. A population of indigenous people is the biggest rate of poverty. So I guess it's nice to support them. And I mean, I don't count as volunteering. Like one of the kids in my class this year. We did a service learning speech where we were supposed to do five, three hours of community service. And he counted selling hot sauce at the bar festival or whatever. Because he said, oh, it's for local businesses, so it counts. And I mean, I don't think so, but. Okay, definitely do more interaction with the world around you. Like when I was in school, I wish I got involved more, wish I got involved in school more, like, wish I did the theater and auditioned for stuff or maybe play on some sports teams or did more clubs and, yeah, did more after school stuff. Because um, the original definition of an idiot back in Greek times was a person who didn't participate in the community. Or who didn't take part, who didn't take part in the community around them. Go ahead.